reimagining blockchain with sustainability in mind. With a company by the name that makes me think delicious thoughts of my children's probiotic snack pouches. I may grab one of those in just a moment. We have uh, William McDonough and Neil Kahn of Chia. Good afternoon, morning, or evening, depending on your placement in the world. I have not, do not have audio from Neil yet. I think that should work now, right? It works now. Awesome. Thank you. Um, gentlemen, if you could uh, give a, a, a quick intro of uh, yourself and what you're up to, uh, maybe starting with Neil and then uh, William, because I know Neil's audio works. Awesome. Yeah, my, my name is Neil Cohen. I'm here with uh, with Bill McDonough. Bill McDonough is actually in Saudi Arabia for work right now. I'm here in, in the U.S. And uh, we're here because of uh, for Chia Network. Chia is a uh, really innovative new blockchain and cryptocurrency that uh, was developed by Bram Cohen. Bram Cohen is famous for um, what he did originally in BitTorrent. And uh, I think he got a little bit frustrated seeing, you know, what where the direction of, uh, of where some of the cryptocurrencies were going. He felt that he recognized the waste early on, recognized that they could be more efficient and the language could be more secure, and uh, decided to do something about it. He had the ability to take some time. About four or five years ago, he uh, started Chia in 2017. And what he looked for was a different way to, uh, to create the consensus. So instead of a proof of work, which is really consuming an, a massive amount of, uh, of energy. He went to proof of space and proof of space and time is where he ended up. So using hard drives, which are pretty tough to hack, it's a commodity, um, and printing basically bingo cards. So the ability to, to do validation on anyone's hard drive was extremely successful. I'm gonna actually start sharing slides if that's okay. But actually, yeah. let me introduce Bill first and then I'll share slides. Sorry about that. So- um, <laughs> Not a problem, perfect. I'll get into this further, but by getting involved in Chia, I recognize that we would um, really benefit from from bringing in one of my heroes, and that's that's uh, Bill McDonough. Bill McDonough is truly um, the father of circular economy, and um, a brilliant architect as well. And and his architecture has really recognized the the um, the incredible importance of of. Uh, being being in sync with our environment, um, biosphere and technosphere, as we'll talk about. So um, I don't know, Bill, you want to, it doesn't need a lot of an introduction here. So Bill, go ahead. I, I wrote a book called Cradle to Cradle, and I'm interested in circular economy and where we eliminate the concept of waste. And so I'm with Neil on the waste of energy to do uh, the Bitcoin mining, for example. Uh, if we can still get the security by doing it with something that's uh, significantly less and, and just as good. And so the idea of working with the industry and, and bringing it into this world that we need, which is one that has a, has a climate we can all live with, is really critical. And the materials are just as critical. So that's why I'm here. Excellent. Thank you. No, it's, it's been um, really cradle to cradle changed my world. And actually, I recommend everyone should read it if you haven't yet. But and it's still as relevant today as it was, you know, when I first read it almost 20 years ago. So um, when I got involved in in Chia, and I recognized that we were switching from this proof of work, which was using processing power, over to proof of space and time, there could be an issue that you know, if we weren't careful, it could be a, a source of e-waste. Um, I'm going to run the slides because I think it might be easier to go through the process here that way. Um, if I can share my screen, I'll do that. Great. Um, hopefully that works. Um, so as I was saying, Chia is green money for digital world. It was designed really, as Bill would say, it was designed with intent. It was designed Not to be just yet. Um, do you have, um, did you have uh, slides? The share screen button should be right down in the uh, center. Oh, I thought I had it on the little laptop with the X through it. You may yeah. have to uh, authorize it to uh, share if you haven't. Uh... Oh, there we are. You good? All set. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Sorry about that. Okay, 
Um, I'll go back to the beginning here. So what we hope to do here actually is uh, introduce a little bit about Chia and then talk about the Chia Circular Drive Initiative, the Circular Storage Initiative now, which uh, Bill McDonough, we're fortunate enough that he's partnered with us to run this and to really be um, our, our more than just our spiritual, you know, um, guide here, but to to really help us uh, help Chia be a source and a force for good. So Chia started out, it's a green digital money and um, it's designed to be secure. It's designed with intent and um, really to cut on the down on the energy use. We are far less than 1% of what a proof of work such as you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum would currently use. And it is by using proof of space and time. Really, it's the first true Nakamoto consensus since Bitcoin. Um, it works very much in the same way. However, the language then recognize the huge advance that Ethereum made by creating programmable money. And what Bram Cohen did there was to create a new language based on Lisp. And Chia Lisp creates smart contracts, smart coins like, like we've seen and have been so successful and um, in, in a very efficient manner. So Chia has the ability to do smart contracts, actually has the ability to be a fully public blockchain that can store data as well without causing a lot of congestion and without, um, right now, without any fees. And we, we believe we'll be able to keep the fees extremely low. Um, we have an enterprise approach. Chia, approach. Chia Network is uh, now working to help companies adopt Chia. And um, we think that you know what we're proving now is it's a very, um, it's a very good technology that that we are starting to get. Hopefully, within the next few months, we'll have some major announcements coming out for some very important uh, uses for Chia. Uh, it's being recognized for its incredibly high security, its um, superior functionality, and it's really unma unmatched uh, sustainability. So the one thing we did recognize was that Chia had the ability to really drive the higher drive market. Uh, when it came out and the network was small, there was massive incentive to go out there and buy hard drives and get on that network fast and start you know, validating and earning Chia. And Chia ended up being about 3% of the market this year so far. Um, so it's, it's made a huge impact. Uh, Western Digital Seagate, they both announced increased earnings and uh, gave a, um, a huge thumbs up to Chia and thank you. They were, they were pretty excited about what it did. Um, while that was fun to see the rush for Chia, we knew that we did not want to see that continue. The, uh, the intent was always that any drive, even a, even a damaged drive, can farm Chia. Chia, once once you once you write that drive with the cryptographs, it really is could be read only. It's extremely low energy, and um, it it um, operates at a, at a very low energy level. So our goal was always to use used drives, drives that were currently um, no longer being used and they just shredded. Uh, we also realized that the global storage market, especially consumers, is extremely underutilized. Um, in most home PCs, it's or in, in most PCs, it's about 23 percent is is what is utilized. And um, you know, even even in specialized hard drive systems and excess hard drives, maybe up to about 30 percent of the drive is actually used to capacity. We went to data centers, which of course 70 percent of all drives are are go to the data centers right away and and we got almost universally the same kind of comment is like hey to swap out these drives about every three to five years it's really wasteful we hate it. but until our clients come to us and tell us not to the perceived security is long enough that we have to continue um when we talk to some of the customers like wow they they, they had no real all of the hyperscalers, you know, the, the data centers are, are very active right now and being energy efficient, but very few talk about this, this issue. And um, especially for corporations that are tracking their, their carbon footprint and trying to offset or go beyond that, they look at the scope three and print and say, wow, this is a game changer. I'd like to see this chain. So at Chia, we realized, you know, we really spent a lot of time looking at this thing and we realized that. Companies are very concerned about data leaks. The, the laws are looking, you know, they're, they're very um, careful to make sure that, that there's drives are actually um, sanitized. But physical destruction is not really necessary. 
Uh, yes, there are many certified data razor solutions. Um, Blanco, there's IT, there's many companies out there that are doing a terrific job and have the ability to sanitize these drives in the rack. And physical destruction, there's a perception that maybe that actually helps in material recycling. It doesn't. The uh, the magnets are lost. The drives are, are, are not reusable. It it um you know we could be remanufacturing. So that that is an unfortunate um situation. The reality is that that we actually could could wipe these drives very easily, and uh, all those processes are are in place. So um, we've been putting this program together. Um, right now, it's really exciting. We're working with some some manufacturers to create computers that would go into the developing world to be used to actually help um, to, to help bootstrap and, and, and be inclusive and bring a, a lot of the um, least developed worlds and, 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 and areas that need to be connected into into that world into into our economy and by including extra storage there they can actually farm chia on those computers to create the the, um, the revenue that could actually pay for those drives or actually give them sources of revenue uh, farming chia is a great second use for these drives even low quality drives that I mentioned and and then also these IT centers are realizing that by having a second use for these drives um, it allows them to lower their overall cost and um, either to use again or to resell or to use to farm chia so we've gotten to the drive manufacturers as well right now we have um, Seagate Western Digital Kioxi, they are jumping on with us they are very excited about the ability to, to um, repurpose, reuse these parts, and remanufacture these drives. And um, I'm going to turn this over to Bill. But what we started here is exciting. And um, we hope to have some major announcements coming out soon. And we would love to talk to him. So many people, I'm sure, that are on this, uh, on this session you know, can see that there is a, a potential to work with us. We would love to just get involved. We're doing this because we know it's the right thing to do. And, and she really wants to be a source of good. We're not. That we have no profit motive in this part of our business, but we want to make sure that everything we do, we're not we're not leaving anything out that could be um, causing a negative impact that we're not recognizing. Thank you. Um, I'm turning it over to Bill. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, to be simple, Cradle to Cradle posits that the world could be seen as a biosphere, which we're part, and a technosphere, which are the objects of human intention and use. So when we talk about consumers, we're talking about things that can actually be consumed and go back to the natural world. But in this case, we're talking about the technosphere. And we call these drives technical nutrients. They are a nutrient of our technological system. And as such, we see them as products as a service. We don't necessarily need to own the materials per se of all these things. In fact, many of them you could not consume safely. So. They really are products as a service. And if we put these in that context and think about it, this is a really important and critical part of Cradle to Cradle was the idea that we store our raw materials with our customers as we go forward in life. So we do the same with carpets. We're doing it with furniture and Herman Miller. We're doing it with many co uh, companies, now countries, as I'm here in Saudi Arabia, pulling this together. So Cradle to Cradle then morphs into the circular economy as its second condition. Its first condition is safe and healthy. The second is a circular economy. So you put these two together and they're bound and you realize we want to have the circular economy uh, in the technosphere, not contaminate the regenerative biosphere. And when we stop and look at carbon, we then realize that the biosphere is regenerative and sends carbon back to the atmosphere and down, but the technosphere does not. And the issue becomes if we go to the next slide, is that the carbon in the story is coming from the geosphere and going to the atmosphere. And that's why we have our carbon crisis. Uh, go ahead, next slide, Neil. So, um, yeah. Would you want like the next slide? Yeah, thank you. So we, we work with companies like Philips to sell the light, not the light fixture. Because what the person wants is lumens not indium and gallium and aluminum. So this way, Philips can provide the light as a service, charge for the lighting, which is all the customers really want, get them the best price, but hold on to these, these molecules, which are so valuable in their industry. So they're storing their raw materials with their customers. This is a really important idea. And translate this over to these drives. These drives should be seen as a perpetual asset to the extent they can. So they have use period, reuse period, reuse period, reuse period at different levels of performance requirement. 
and then we cascade it down until the point at which we want to recover the materials themselves and start over. So think of that as these drives. It's such a special and important idea. We don't take, make waste. We take, we make, we use, we reuse, we we reuse, we reuse, we reuse, and then we recycle. Okay. So to finish, that we're now here at the and and getting ready for Glasgow, and and we've created something called the circular carbon economy, which looks at the circular economy and the movement of car of carbon through that economy. And so we have two issues here that Chia is addressing, the simultaneously both critical. One is the idea that we're not going to double glaze the planet. I don't care what you think you want to do. If you're going to end up with data, data uh, management becoming one of the largest energy users in the world, we have to be really quite careful about that. That's one. And then two is that these materials are really important to us. And that, you know, since we now realize carbon is both a material and a fuel, and that becomes a critical point in our understanding of what we're making and we have to put intention into it. So as we look at this diagram, we realize there's elements all over this that are how we're gonna solve for the atmospheric problems. And GIA is one of them. It's a critical one. And then on the circular technosphere, we need materials that are cycling properly. And that's the other thing we can do with the drives. So this is a harbinger of the future we want instead of an extension of the, of the world that seemed to use, uh, that if brute force wasn't working, you weren't using enough of it. So it's a far more elegant approach. And uh, that's why I'm so excited about it. Thank you, Neil. Excellent. Thanks, Bill. Um, Jeremy, this just may be us. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, there we go. Hey, Jeremy. Hey. No, oh, back into uh, back into field. Any uh, field? Any questions? I think uh, we'll bring uh, we'll bring Grace back along. Um, uh, Grace back along also. That uh, yeah, that sounds like. I'm still I'm still absorbing all of it. There's oh. the. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, didn't think of using um, drives that way. I know personally, I have a uh, stack of them that I don't necessarily want back out into the world, but don't necessarily want to uh, uh, smash up and put in a put in a pile somewhere either. And so they've been, uh, I guess, waiting to uh, waiting to find their purpose. And I guess that's uh, I guess that's just been been made very clear. Now, Jeremy, you can give us a call. Honestly, the um, easiest thing to do is start farming. Cheap. Once you actually plot a drive for Chia, you've erased any any other data. So without having to go through any other process because the cryptographs will cover any data that you would have had. So that's one way that any consumer that has drives can go ahead and do that. Um, we're, Bill and I are starting those with data centers. Massive amount of drives are being destroyed on a constant basis. And because it's, it just appears safer, they're just being shredded. And, and we're losing the magnets, we're losing really critical material and they're being landfilled for the most part. So just that only, a, I mean, I have the stats here, but a tiny fraction is actually being recovered. Um, but our goal would be then to go to the consumers at some point. So we're, we're in. Yeah, I, I, I love keeping stuff out of landfills. I can't imagine that the water that's uh, filtered down through there is, uh, is gonna be delicious. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, we have uh, Grace back here. So we're trying yeah, to be very calm yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah, very much so. I think you uh, uh, sped through and left and got us right back onto uh, right back onto track. That's what I was going to say. It was speedy and informative. <laughs> awesome. So yeah. thanks, Grace. Um, well, I mean, there's no other questions. Sorry, Bill. There's something else you wanted to. Bill, by the way, Bill is um. This is a really key moment in history of the humans making things because in the same way we look at batteries, the biggest battery mine in the world is everybody's drawer somewhere in their office with all the old batteries sitting around and all these different equipment. And at some point we have to get this rationalized and figured out that there's no reason to destroy the planet when we have so many things readily available. So I think it's a matter of getting used to it. And I don't think it's gonna take that long once we realize how simple it is. Yeah. 
And it's really fun that the manufacturer that you might have thought would be really afraid of cannibalizing your business, they've really embraced this. They they are excited by it. They um I mean Seagate, Western Digital, they're they're right on. And they're 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 once we brought this to them, you know, they're they're planning how these, you know, how they're gonna do it what the centers are and we, we hope to announce this sooner, but when I think we're gonna be now coming out with, with a much bigger plan with with you know, also hopefully data centers, and we're hoping Equinix and some of their clients will uh, will jump on board. So it's it's exciting. Yeah, can, it's in the early stages, though. Yeah, no, that makes uh, that makes perfect sense. I can imagine that the drive manufacturers, like, if you want the newest ones with the highest performance, that's great. But they also don't want a mountain of confetti with their company logo on it. That's a terrible look. It's true. Thank you. And I have a question. I mean, in line with just how you're seeing this growth, you know, you stated this is a new and exciting time for civilization. I made that comment earlier. I was like, humanity's you know, on the brink of something. And maybe this is how Mayans and Aztecs felt when they were, you know, creating crystal skulls and or how Mesopotamians felt when they had running water and flushing toilets, right, in antiquity. Um, you know that there is such significant power here and you know that we have to be good stewards of this power. And I wonder if, you know, what you all, the opinion you all might have on how our growing climate crisis is really driving the interest of players that have not traditionally been in this field of sustainability and technology, especially in regards to blockchain. I think personally, I think it's a great question and, and a real one, because as Neil said at the beginning of the program, um, you know, design is the first signal of human intention. And if we, if we ask ourselves if our current system was actually intended, what would it sound like as a design assignment? If we had a retroactive design assignment that said, let's go do solve abstract problems and destroy the climate at the same time. Is that something we would ever intend to do? Let's go make a lot of things out of various materials, some of which are highly toxic and then spread them all over the place without any you know, fundamental care for future generations. Was that something we would intend to do? So I think we have a chance to question our own intentions because if we say it wasn't our plan and therefore we're not responsible, it's our de facto plan because it's the thing that's happening because we know have no other plan. So who has the plan? And that's one of the things I love about this, that this is a, something that is intentionally being developed to do the things we need and not do the things that terrify us. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I like it way more because the, the ancient blockchains that Grace was talking about from those civilizations probably relied more on a uh, proof of human sacrifice model, which is- uh, <laughs> That's definitely proof of work now. Absolutely, absolutely destructive. <laughs> That's proof of death. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, one one of the things about Chia, and we kind of get a little blue spot sky space here with Bram, always to create and innovate. And we've been um, looking at different ways that we could expand what blockchain can validate and how it can, you know, the different kinds of data and different, you know, obviously proof of space and time is phenomenal for what it can do. It's going to give a purpose and a way to keep these drives out of landfills. It's going. It's as secure or more. Seen since then, um, but I really do believe we're finding ways that we're going to really help people all over the world start to be included in the society and economy. Um, our goal is to find problems that can be solved through blockchain, not looking for ways to deploy really cool tech. You know, we're not looking for problems. We know where the problems are. We're going to solve those, even if they may not be the easiest way to make money right away. Excellent. Uh, thank you both so much for joining us. Where's the uh, best place that we should direct folks to who are uh, interested in hearing more? Uh, Chia.net is our main site. I'll be honest, it's, not, it's, it's pretty much made for some heavy tech guys at the moment. Um, until, until guys like me started getting more involved, we were just a lot of really smart developers that were building. Um, it's just getting more into the business side of it, and we'll have all that out from them in the next month or two. But um, it's a good place to start. Um, my, my email is neil at chia.net. Um, you can always reach me, and I'll, I'll, I'll get you the 
Phil, I'll get you to anybody you want to talk to. So we're, um, we love us. Honestly, we barely sleep. This is all we want to do. <laughs> so it's great. Perfect. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.